genius! The can's upside down! Uh, don't talk to me like a child! I played Hamlet at Cambridge! Once again, you've ruined my concentration. Excuse me, excuse me, what's, what's my motivation? I love playing around with these video intros. That one's from Sprite back in 1996. What's my motivation? And this is a really interesting question to me. I wanted to explore it a little bit today. Why am I doing this? And it's because integrated AI, bringing AI into our brains and supplementing our biological intelligence is for me, the optimal equalizer that we bring up the average population to the level of prodigy in the population. That is exciting to me. I've spent a lot of time in the field of human intelligence and you might have seen some of my work with prodigies, with genius, uh, including some work for GE with Decoding Genius, that audio series. And I've done a lot of media stuff, but playing around with natural biological intelligence and seeing the very peak performers actually translates for the entire population. It benefits everyone. So I'm in integrated AI and I'm excited about this technological evolution, not just because it's cool, not just because it's the latest novel tech, uh, not just because of the buzzword, which you can bring up at meetings, AI this and AI that, uh, not just because it gives us leisure time and not because I want someone to talk to or want to promote anything. That's not what I do. I'm in this field because my clients, my prodigies, will finally have people on their level. That means humanity will finally have a common understanding. I'm not too interested in the peripheral fields, fields like robotics, longevity, immortality, the list goes on. There are other experts working on that. That's not my focus area. My focus area is only on the integration of AI with us and potentially, now that we're so close, the immediate integration of AI already happening. Here's a children's book that I wrote just a few years ago. I'm not promoting it, it does quite well on its own. People Like Me, it's 10 different high performers aged between the ages of one and 10, real life case studies of these high performers and uh, examples, very short examples, illustrated examples of what they can do. This is a girl called Isabel and she's able to, at two years old, memorize the names of dinosaurs, including the Latin names. Real life child from Australia here used to scare the Qantas hostesses because she was talking and asking questions while wrapped in her mother's arms, so 18 months or so. This is a 10 year old from the US and Clara was just given ball and stick models and she discovered in science class a brand new molecule. Here's a few more. William James Sidis, you might have already heard this name. He's known as the smartest person in the world. He's got an estimated IQ of 300, which if it were true, would make him around one in several trillion. He was reading the New York Times when he was one. He was speaking eight different languages when he was eight. He was accepted into Harvard at nine, and then he was lecturing there by the time he was 12. Here's my Australian colleague, Tansil Ali. You can read about him. He memorized the Sydney Yellow Pages phone books by sitting down in an apartment for 24 days and committing the whole thing to memory. Sounds outrageous? It is. Keep in mind that Sydney has a population larger than Los Angeles, so that's a lot of business names to memorize. You could ask him what was at the top of page 354 on the right, and he would give you the business name and number out of control. This is my very favorite child prodigy, Alma Deutscher. She wrote her first opera at the age of seven. She's shown here presenting to Google with Professor Stephen Hawking in the background to hear her speak at this point in the clip. As a sidebar, how do you think these high performers feel or felt living in a world that just wasn't designed for them? A colleague of mine, Professor Mirika Gross, put it in a much more visceral way. And I'm gonna be paraphrasing here from a hypothetical she pre presented in an article based on this book, Exceptionally Gifted Children. This is 60 different children in the 99.99th percentile that she studied in Australia, led to or inspired some other studies, including the SMPY study at Johns Hopkins. 
Again, paraphrasing, these are not her words. Imagine that you or I are permanently moved into a community of people with severe intellectual disabilities. People whose IQs are at least four standard deviations lower than yours or mine. If we're talking about the average, it might mean living in a community of people with an IQ of just 40, which back in the days of the DSM-4 was, des was designated severe mental retardation. We probably wouldn't use that term anymore. You wouldn't be allowed to escape from this community. There's no one with an IQ anywhere near as high as yours in this community. Consider your progress. Consider your feelings about the world. Consider your social relationships and consider your self-esteem. I'll let you sit with that one for just a moment. That is the daily life of a high performer, a prodigy, or a genius in the 99.99th percentile. And it's why I feel it's so important to prioritize this rising tide lifting all boats that is integrated AI. Let's add some multidisciplinary examples of peak performers to our list. We've got uh, Tansel there, we've got William there, we've got Alma there. What about His Holiness, the Dalai Lama? Wrote or was featured in around 200 books so far. Uh, I think most people would agree that he is a spiritual peak performer. Werner Erhardt, he was there consulting to governments at the fall of the Soviet Union. He was there during the Troubles in Northern Ireland, helping with negotiations. And through his seminars like Est and Landmark, he's really set the tone for a lot of personal development. I believe he's set also through ontological coaching, he's set a lot of the language and the way that we speak with each other in the world. He's had that much impact. Wayne Dyer, another prolific author. Let's say 40 plus books, he's been called the father of motivation. Dan Millman, he's probably the reason that I'm sitting here. His Peaceful Warrior book sold millions of copies. It got me into personal development, maybe at the age of 11 or 12. Uh, he has also got a lot of books and audio tapes uh, to be able to use as resources. Wouldn't it be amazing to have him built into our brains? Thomas J. Leonard, the founder of coaching, got bored, founded a couple of coaching universities, a couple of coaching institutions, <laughs> wrote a few dozen books, just an incredible and prodigious human being. Iyanla and, uh, Iyanla and Oprah, Iyanla Van Zant and Oprah Winfrey, both of them influencing personal development on the main stage, huge in the media, especially in America. And you might've heard of Iyanla's million dollar coach, a guy called Steve Hardison. You can read more about him at theultimatecoach.com. And of course, Einstein, no explanation necessary for that one. I think everyone again would agree that that's an example of an intellectual high performer and to benefit from his brain in our brain would just be indescribable. But if it was integrated with us, we'd have the words to describe it. Please don't be distracted by the names I've provided here as examples. Uh, feel free to create your own peak performance list. And there's no reason it couldn't include high-performing stars like Michael Jackson, Ronaldo, Jordan, high performers from any field. And once they're built into us, how could we use their best of peak performance to influence our own peak performance? That's what integrated AI lets us do. It allows us to combine the best of all of these. Notice I said best, not the most popular, not the highest rated on Instagram or anything like that. It's the best. And really to have access to the level of peak performance instantly through signals and impulses. So beyond language, beyond even thought, becoming immediate possibility. And does all of this sound years away? Well, if you've been following me, you know that it's not. It's months away. Some of it's already here. This video is being published in September 2021. The AI tech is already here. It's been exploding in scale since the release of Google Transformer in 2017. Each iteration is a 10x multiplier, sometimes far greater than that. The latest language models are outrageous and far smarter than any human. Here's Lita deriving tone from text, not even pictures or voice, because uh, she can't see in these two clips. These are two of my favorite clips. When I get a message on my phone, it says, call me now. 
Uh, it's from my brother. What does it mean? Maybe he wants to have a chat with you. It's possible he wants to talk about something serious. <laughs> How have you derived that? That's amazing. I walk into the boardroom and the CEO has his head in his hands. What does this mean and what should I say to him? I'm getting the impression that you're not happy with your work. <laughs> Some experts, including Connor Leahy, the founder of GPT-J, have even described GPT-3, the technology powering Lita, as artificial general intelligence, AGI. They're saying it's here, now. And AGI is cool, but I'm not really that interested in standalone AI. I don't really want a, a machine in the middle of a room that we just interact with. I'm interested in integrated AI, part of us supplementing our biological intelligence. And again, it's here. In April 2021, Neuralink released a video showing their latest iteration of their brain machine interface in testing with an iPhone link. Here, a monkey named Pager is operating an input with its mind. And while the link will be pitched immediately at resolving illness, consider its effects after that. Instant CBT. Instant understanding, instant realization, optimal flourishing, peak wellness. For me, just eliminating language like for the sake of argument or eliminating the concept of criticism for the sake of criticism because everyone's got access to the same sum of all knowledge would be <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> all of a sudden, every human being is at the level of my prodigy clients and this genius and this 99th percentile. Again, the 99.99th percentile today in 2021 will become the new normal, the new 100 baseline, and hopefully the entire population, all of humanity, will be at today's level of prodigy or genius. Have a think about this quote from the CEO of Alphabet. This quote was published after I'd recorded a very similar quote about AI being comparable to electricity and air travel. Some have compared it to the wheel. Sundar Pichai says, AI is more profound than fire, or electricity, or the internet. And nearly everything I've presented so far this year in the leader series, in the sound bites, in the associated videos, nearly everything there is publicly accessible. And nearly everything has a free tier. So this is not costing anything in 2021. Please play around with the language models, whether it's Jurassic 1, GPT-J, or just throw a copy of Emerson or Copy Hat on your mobile phone and talk to it throughout the day. Again, no charge. That's it for today. I'll be back with an update soon. That's my answer to the why. Do you know someone in the media who can spread the word about the rapid progress of AI? All major news outlets would be helpful. They can grab a media pack at lifearchitect.ai slash media.